Hi, writers. Welcome to Writing Tips from Peter Heller, the wonderful author of The Dog Stars, The Painter, Celine, The Guide, The River, so other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of don't stop. Um, hi, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to uh, share with us some writing tips? What do you do? How do you do it? What's the best stuff to share with aspiring writers at any level of experience? Um, well, I, th I think the first thing is um, to understand that it, it, it takes so much work. And that's why it's so great that these people are um, taking your class because you make the work really fun. And you're one of the finest writing teachers that I've ever encountered anywhere. So um, given that this is a real, you know, it's a process and it's a lot of work um, to have a guide like you and make it fun is really awesome. So uh, that is great. And um, maybe that's the first thing I should say how important it is to have a little bit of a writing community so that you can, um, as, as you work on your um, process and as you work on your craft, um, you have other people that you trust to bounce stuff off of and that you can read, read to. I couldn't agree more. I think yeah. it's so important. So it's super important not to be isolated, I think. Um, second thing is, uh, if you ever hear a writer saying that they're channeling the divine or whatever, or they're in a fugue state and they just, you know, sort of wrote it and woke up and it was done, um, they're sort of lying. And what I mean by that is that um, what they're sort of telling you is that, I mean, it's not helpful because then aspiring writers think that great writing is sort of magic and it just sort of, you know, it flows through you if, if you're lucky, but it's really not true. What, what these writers are saying is that they find themselves in a flow state the way a great basketball player would. And the, and the reason a great basketball player can, you know, drive down the court and pass and take passes and then lay up, beautifully lay up without even thinking about it is because she has taken a thousand foul shots and a, a million jump shots and practiced a billion passes and you know really, really, really work to the point where all of that becomes uh, very natural and sort of instinctive. And um, then she can let her mind go and relax in the middle of the activity and let go of thoughts of maybe everything she's learned and be in that process, be completely immersed in it and transported. And that's when writing becomes really magical, but it's not magic. It's just because you have done all that groundwork. So I would just encourage writers to stick with it as a craft. I mean, I, approach my work sort of like hmm, like a furniture maker maybe where you know you come into the wood shop every morning you put on your apron you sharpen the 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 chisels and you start making the joints and you know you sand the wood and all, all of that uh and you really are just building something and then you know if you're lucky enough and you've prepared enough if that happens to allow you to let go and create art, then, you know, it's fantastic. But, um, you know, the craft is where we all have to really be and be humble, humble to the craft. I really feel like that. I, so. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like if you work on the craft enough, it's like the craft kind of can lift you up into the wonder that your brain and your heart really want to access. Exactly, because you will bump into that eventually you will bump into what's really on your heart and you will bump into the ability to really express it too mm -hmm. with all that work and it's so marvelous then you're transported and that's the most wonderful thing so that's the first thing i would say the second thing just more on a technical level is i really 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 believe in momentum and and sort of losing that you know, when you are actually in the process of writing, not revising, but in writing, try and turn off that editing part of the brain that's perfectionist, that wants it to be really good, you know, right now. That, you know, um, what I'm trying to do when I write is just make a big bunch of clay that I know later on I can 
you know, I can add more, I can, you know, shape, reshape, I can take stuff off. Um, but the clay has to be fun clay. And the only way to make fun clay is to really just let it rip and have, trust that, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to end up writing about what you really, you know, care about sooner or later here and not edit it. I don't edit as I go ever. And I really believe in speed. You know, I think there's something to that whole thing about keeping the pen. You know, they used to say, keep the pen on the paper and just let, just keep going. Um, so what I do every day is I write um, a certain quota of words every day. For me, it's a thousand words. Uh, and I never write less than that, but I never let myself run way more than that. Even if I'm in the middle of the most exciting scene I've ever written, I will always stop just after the thousand words. So I'm right in the middle of something that I'm excited about. So it might be a thousand and sixty words and I just stop. I make myself stop, even though I could have written 3,000, 4,000 words that day. What, what happens if you let yourself run on um, when you're writing is um, you write that 3,000 words, you finish the scene, you go, wow, that was amazing. You go on with the rest of your day, but you've stopped at a transition. You've stopped at a double return. You've stopped at white space. So you come back to, if you do that every day, which a lot of people do, you come back to white space every morning or afternoon, whatever you write. And you might as well start the book or the story over again every day. You got to get that rock rolling back up the hill. So, um, I think there's really something to keeping to your quota, but stopping in the middle of something exciting. And it changed my life as a writer, completely changed my attitude towards my writing. Uh, now, uh, where, where it used to be, I'd get out of bed and go, oh, okay, what am I going to write next? Now I, I hop out of bed and I can't wait to get back into what I'd left. And again, all that work um, is being done uh, you know, while I was sleeping. So, so what I'm writing now is going to be better anyway than if I'd have continued the day before. So that's my method. Uh, <laughs> I really like it. I think it, it's very helpful. And, and I yeah. don't edit, you know, when I get, when I start again the next morning, I might read a paragraph or a page before just to get the rhythm and the feel of it and remember, you know, exactly what was going on. I might change a word or two if I just happen to see something egregious, but, but I'm not editing, you know, I, I just jump back in leave the editing for the revision is what is what I do. Right, which is a whole different mood. <laughs> what else do you do? Do you have any technical stuff that you keep in mind? Uh, yeah, so I, I keep a handful of stuff in mind that I always have to remind myself. Uh, you know, the, the, the show don't tell is the, is the biggest one probably. You know, we always have to remind ourselves, you know. So the way I do that, that is to keep myself First of all, I, I'm always establishing a sense of place at the beginning of any, any, any book or really any scene. You know, I really want to establish a sense of place so that my reader can be transported the way I am. And um, the way I do that is I use my senses. And I know you talk about that a lot. And you, you told me that um, you told me that, the, that, the, that we trust our senses more than we trust our brains, you know, the thinky think stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I thought about that a lot after you said that. And it's like really, really true. Um, so I use as many senses as I can, you know, right, right away. An example of, of the difference between the sort of telling uh, and then the showing with the senses is like, I remember I was writing an, an article about learning to fly in Montana and I was landing on this little um, empty airstrip in the middle of nowhere in the woods. I wrote, you know, I got out, there was a hot wind blowing. And then I rewrote it and I got out and I smelled sun-toasted sage. And I heard the little rusted Coke sign banging against the pole. So there was the heat and the wind, but in a communicated in a sensory way. How much more effective is that? How much more does it root you there in the place? Right. That's what I, I repeat that ad nauseum to everyone, including myself, you know, the more specific the detail in the senses, exactly like that, you know, baked sage, that thing knocking against the sign that just injects feeling into your emotional centers, because we were cave women and men once, and we listen to our senses, our sense of smell and taste and texture and how hot is it because we our survival depended on it. 
Peter Heller, thank you so much for joining today. Those are great tips and writers, try them. They really work. <laughs> that thousand word a thing, day thing where you write into the next scene. It's so magical. Or 200 <laughs> words. Remember, if you only have time for 200, you know, do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Mwah. Thanks, Lise. <laughs>